Hi, everyone. It's Lindsay Baker. I am live at Off the Plate Sanctuary. Well, I'm remotely live because I'm in L.A. and you're in Vermont. And this is Gretchen. And Gretchen, you are here with... This is Jackson. Jackson. Like Jackson. Michael, like Michael Jackson, yeah. <laughs> How amazing. Well, that's Charlie, your husband, and you guys run yeah. off the plate sanctuary. What was your life like before you started your sanctuary? How did what brought you to this path? Well, we ultimately this is the what we always wanted to do. Hey, stop it. I got a cow beating me with this horn. None of it. Stop. Stop. Um we just kind of this is what we the goal we've been working towards for spent several years we were in the san francisco bay area and um a job transfer came up for charlie and it was in kind of like the boonies of vermont and i thought well that's a perfect spot to have my animal sanctuary so we found this farm that already had a barn set up and um it was kind of meant to be the right time so um i was an er nurse i've been an er nurse for several years and decided to quit my job how long have you been running the sanctuary Je we've been here three, it'll be three years um, in October. Um, so we just kind of started this. We got here and um, had some things to do to the barn and to the pasture. We had some fencing to put in and then we decided to um, get our first animals. There were some goats that needed a home. So we started with our goats. How are you acquiring the animals? Like how did the goats come to you, for example? So the goats um, came from a farm. There's so many farms here in Vermont. Um, so this a farmer put an ad in on Craigslist, actually. We were very new to the whole animal save part of it. And he said that um, he had some baby goats that needed to go or they were going to be killed that night. So we got in the car about 8 o'clock p.m. and drove to about an hour to where he was. And um, he gave us a little tour of his barn. There were goats just packed, cram packed. and he had little baby goats that were just born a couple days ago and they didn't want to uh, spend the time to to take care of them so he the daughter asked him to put an uh, ad in the paper instead of killing them which they frequently do um so we got eight goats from him and they were all bottle fed we had to feed them four or five times a day yeah. how many do you have now well they were sickly when they came to us they all had medical issues so uh, unfortunately, some of them didn't survive. Um, we had the vets out here quite frequently, but we have four now. So out of the eight, we have four of them. The farmer said that he wasn't going to give them the colostrum, even though the colostrum was good for their uh, immune system. It was worth more to him to sell it than to give it to them. So when we picked them up, they were about a week old, maybe about a week old. And we had the vet out two, three times a week trying to work on them. Um, eventually what we ended up doing was doing a VIX vapor rub for one of them and a nebulizer just just so we can breathe. And uh, he, he lived for a long time. Yeah, we, so they, we, it was a lot of medical care. Um, I guess my nursing came in handy because I was doing breathing treatments on baby goats for, for a while. So, um, and before we moved here. So yeah, I've been an ER nurse for about, almost 20 years. It does seem like what you said where it was just meant to be. This became my full-time job. Um, and it's a lot of work. I, I have to say this is probably the hardest job I've ever had, but very, very rewarding. What are the costs involved and how do you pay for all of this? I know that Charlie still works. Medical bills have been the, the biggest for us um, lately. We've had a lot of medical issues with the animals. Um, Again, most of them didn't get the colostrum from the, even the cows, so um, they come pretty sickly, so it takes a lot to to get them healthy. Um, but yeah, this um, we get donations. We have a handful of, of donors that donate every month, which helps a lot. Um, and then we do fundraisers from time to time. Right now, we have gone going for the hay. Um, we have to fill up the hay in the barn for the winter. So we have a fundraiser going for that. So people are pretty generous with the with the um, fundraisers. So there's a few ways I had come to your website, and there's a few ways that people can get involved and donate. So this would be great if you could talk about those for us. Yeah. So there's um, several ways to donate. Um, again, we have the 
fundraiser is going quite frequently off of social media, so you can just click the button actually and donate that way. Um, and then on our website, um, we have Venmo, PayPal um, network um, for good. Oh, let's see, what else do we have on there? Uh, most people donate by PayPal because it's pretty pretty convenient for people. Myself. I see you've got Patreon. So Yeah, there's um, if the people wanted to donate monthly for that, um, we also have a, a monthly newsletter that we go that goes out. That's, that's actually been a great way to. I think our bi our biggest cost is always going to be hay. veterinary costs and hay. Yeah. So that's that's I think every sanctuary is going to have that problem. Yeah. You need to feed, in, especially up here. You need to feed for at least six months in the winter when it's three feet of snow. You know, so you know it's minus twenty degrees outside and. And you need at least eight to nine hundred bales of hay to get you through the winter. So that's the biggest thing. The next biggest thing would be veterinary costs. You know, I think yeah. we've spent somewhere in the range of this year at least I'd say at least seven to eight thousand dollars in veterinary costs. So so it does get expensive. Right. So donating is good off your website is a great way. I'd like to show a few of the videos. Don't mind. There they are, sleeping folks. Yeah. So basically, yeah. they came from a testing lab. Um, they use pigs a lot for in testing lab, pharmaceutical testing labs, and and um, all different kinds of, of testing for pigs because their uh, genetic makeup is pretty much similar, very similar to ours. Um, so we got them when they were about three months old. Um, they were heading off to be euthanized and the lady intercepted that and asked if we could take them. So they were about 40 pounds when we got them and now they're about five, 600 pounds each. So they, they grow really fast, really, really big. <laughs> That's, That's my big so, boy. You guys, it looks so idyllic where you are. So the black horse, uh, that's Blaze. And then the brown horse is his mother. It's uh, Margaret. She's 21. He's about uh, eight years old. And when we got him, she was the only one that we could touch. And she was real skittish. But he's also very skittish, even about a year later after having him. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's able to come up to us time and again like this, as long as we have treats, of course. But, um, you know, he doesn't like people walking behind him or, or reaching up to him still. But it's going to take time. Well, it's amazing that you guys are doing what you're doing because these animals need you. And I wanted to ask you a question about people that might be interested in starting, like maybe they live on a piece of property where they would have the room to have even just like a few animals in a micro sanctuary because 
there's so many that need help. Do you think that's a solution for some of the animals? I know it's difficult work, but do you well, think people could do it? Or what's your take on that? I think you you need to research um, how much land an animal needs to graze to get a you know to to be healthy. Uh, at least realize that you're going to spend you know hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars on veterinary costs to get the animal healthy again, and then time. Uh, you need to be able to have and dedicate a majority of your free time to be able to take care of them. Cause you need to take care of their mental health too, not just their physical health. Can you talk about that? Bit. The mental <laughs> health? I don't think people know about that. Well, sure. I mean, you know, a lot of these animals that need to be rescued, they've gone through a lot of terrible incidences that have scarred them mentally. Um, and you need to, Either find someone who's willing to work with them or uh, just slowly, slowly work yourself. But it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. So getting out there and saying, oh, you know, it's just a matter of being nice to an animal. It is, but it's more than that. You know, you have to create that bond. And that bond is, is not on, it's not on your time. It's on their time. Right. Right. By that, you mean you can't just do it when you feel like it. It's a 24 seven, like with children or elderly, a parent, much bigger job, but the same principle, you can't just, you know, shirk it off and do it when you feel like it. If people want to see more of the animals that you have, they can go to your website and that is, I just want to repeat that for everyone. If they want to donate, if they want to learn more about the animals, offtheplate.org is the website. And, you know, I wanted to mention that a lot of people, when they want to donate money, uh, unfortunately, they sometimes go to organizations that really are not doing a lot for animals. And I hope is that people recognize that supporting you guys uh, by donating to smaller organizations, it, it, it's really a good thing. It's like grassroots, you know, right there, you see where your money's going. And I like that. And I think a lot of people do. And that's, that's, that's another thing going back to one of your previous questions about other people wanting to get into it is that you need to learn how to, how to work on the fly. And if the veterinarian isn't available, then at least have the veterinarian train you to do these things, how to give uh, a 1200 pound cow, a 20 CC shot twice a day, right? Uh, how to, how to flush out the sheath of a cow, you know, and they're not going to just stand there and let you do it either. So these are just different little things that people need to realize. If you get into it, make sure you get in with both feet and, and get ready to swim. Yeah, but sure. uh, just having finding the right veterinarian because some veterinarians, when they're they're used to working with like the veterinarians here, they're used to working with throwaway animals. So uh, you have to be able to uh, express your interest in not letting this be a throwaway animal. These are more pets than anything, and that they have to think outside the box. You know, because they're they're these these are some of these veterinarians. They do you know a few thousand cows a day. And if some die, they die. If not, you know, then great. But they're they're just in it to help the dairy industry. So uh, not only are you training uh, or talking to other people about taking better care of animals, but sometimes you even have to talk to your vet about it. Wow. You know, these are, these are not throwaway animals. These are pets, in a sense. And right. so they should be treated as such. Right. Oh, and that was the point I was going to make. Thank you for bringing me back to my point. We don't see them as pets anymore. We see them as other beings, you know, that have the right to be here. People don't get that part, that it's not like we're being nice. It's just we're not being a-holes. Excuse my language. Right. We're just, we're not taking right. something that doesn't belong to us. And being, being able to 
express that to your veterinarian who only works with in the dairy industry yeah. is very difficult. Vermont is you know? a big dairy country. We're right yeah. in the middle. There's dairy farms all around us. So um, yeah. they're used to going out to farms that have hundreds of cows that, you know, if one doesn't make it, it's just, you know. Yeah, and we have, we, we, so the reason that we moved out here was specifically because we're in the dairy industry. You know, we live out here in uh, amongst the dairy industry. Um, you don't want to live 200 miles away and and try to save a save a calf or a cow. It creates a lot of uh, technical issues, you know, a lot of logistic issues. So that's that's why we moved out here, is to move into the hard hard areas. Mm-hmm. So that's but, you know, and then there is there's a farmer here who owns a majority of of the dairy farms here in Vermont, in Northern Vermont. And, um, you know, so people say, you know, and, and it's true that if a male is born, that, you know, they, they're, they're not worth anything in the dairy industry. So a lot of the farmers, they'll just, and it's sad to say that they'll just kill the baby when it's there, if it's a male, because the male doesn't produce anything. Yeah. Yes, that's been revealed before. Yeah, we've talked about that many times. Yeah, the, the dairy industry is needs to go and it's a dying industry. And the thing, the work you guys do is unbelievable and it's just incredible. You know, the thing that oh, I always think about when I think I see a, a sanctuary farm like yours is, oh my gosh, when I was little and I was told about farms and dairies, you know, you're not painted with the true picture. This is what I thought it was like, a lot of happy animals running around. Right. Unfortunately, Vermont, you know, has a kind of give people the idea that there's happy animals here. We have these beautiful barns and like picture postcard barns, but inside there's animals that are tied up and they never get to see the light of day. And so it's kind of a, a dirty little secret they kind of have and trying to keep people believing their lies about the dairy industry. So, right. I say you work as an ambassador for yeah, the absolutely, and what it could be because there's so many alternatives that they could be uh, producing. They could be producing, be producing plant-based products that would feed the world. We need more plant-based products. And you guys are on the right track. So we want to show people one more time um, how they can contact you off the plate.org and the donation page is right there. There's several ways you can help. We see great strides here and we're hoping that it will go carry across because people in Vermont love their state and I'm sure they want their state to be beautiful and they want to have an image of it that's not tainted. And it could be, I mean, it's change can happen. It's going to take a while, but change yeah. can happen. Right. Um, and thank you for coming on. And I want to encourage people to donate. The holidays are coming up too. Uh, do a virtual tour. Come and see your website and join your newsletter. Get on the newsletter yeah. so that they can keep in touch with what's going on. Thank you so okay. much for having us on. We really appreciate you. My pleasure.